so thank you. Uh, I'm extremely excited uh, to be here today uh, at this at this great August occasion. Um, so uh, in my talk, I'm going to begin by reviewing some work I've been doing over the past few years on the simplification of strongly coupled quantum field theories, uh, and in particular, uh, conformal quantum field theories in sectors of large quantum number of some conser quantized conserved charge, which I'll refer to generically as J. Um, and the stuff I'm going to tell you about is based on previous work, both jointly and separately, with many authors, uh, but especially Domenico Orlando, Susanna Reffert, and Masataka Watanabe on conformal theories in a uh, large quantum number sector, mostly in three dimensions, a and also uh, 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 stuff which is more uh, directly uh, Shatishvili relevant, uh, which is some current work in progress <coughs> with Dodelson, Watanabe, and uh, Yamazaki on the same models in uh, two dimensions. So, uh, and I want to now give a, a Shadishvili related comment, uh, which is that even before being invited to this conference, in fact, as part of the uh, one of the many uh, intersecting motivations for this, this larger project, uh, many times I noticed how strongly our work uh, intersected uh, and was informed and inspired by a number of Samson's major contributions to theoretical physics. Um, and the two uh, which are going to be most directly relevant are Samson's role uh, in the development of the uh, background independent open string field theory, uh, and in particular, the development, uh, the development of the concept of theory space to the level of a concrete tool uh, for giving meaningful expressions in string theory, which is something that had been uh, proposed previously, but, but uh, I think uh, Samson's work made it somehow much more concrete and, 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 and uh, 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 te technically uh, usable tool. And also, of course, Samson's work on quantum integrability in two dimensions is, is very directly relevant to our, our current work in progress. So the general setting, as I said, is about uh, uh, simplification of otherwise strongly coupled quantum systems at large quantum number. But my particular focus uh, today will, will be the case where J is the weight of an SON representation uh, in the uh, two-dimensional ON model. Uh, but I'll review older work on conformal cases in three and four dimensions for context. Uh, because I think probably many uh, in the audience haven't heard about this stuff. Some of you have, uh, 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 but most of you maybe haven't. So by otherwise strongly coupled, I mean outside of any simplifying limit where the theory becomes semi-classical for any other reason, uh, but with the quantum number taken so large that the system behaves differently than you might have expected despite being, uh, sorry, despite not being weakly coupled. Uh, so the primary question is, well, is this even a subject? Why should large quantum number uh, simplify uh, anything? Um, and the answer is, this is a subject, and in some sense it's an old one. And many examples have appeared in the literature going far back into the past. But recently, over the last few years, there have been a number of groups focusing on systematizing this point of view uh, and applying it more broadly. And I'm sorry, actually, I left some people out of the references. I was about to correct that uh, during the coffee break, but you, you didn't have one. So OK, uh, I'll say verbally some of the people I accidentally left out. But um, this idea goes, I think, all the way back to the atomic hypothesis uh, in, in the uh, era of the classical Greeks. No, uh, really, actually. Uh, you uh, that you forgot some classical Greek people? Uh, yeah, in fact, I did. It, my, my student, the f my first PhD student uh, who, who was doing work on this, pointed out that I credited Democritus and not uh, Leucippus, I think. <laughs> there, there was somebody else who got screwed out of credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll uh, I'll ask him uh, later. But uh, uh, then jumping ahead a couple of millennia, the correspondence principle, uh, a large spin in the Hadron spectrum, and, and then the so-called macroscopic limit of statistical quantum statistical mechanics. Uh, then in, in what I'd call history, uh, uh, 
the BMN limit of n equals 4 at large r charge uh, and also large spin, uh, an analogous limit developed in parallel. Uh, um, then the large spin expansion in general CFT from light cone bootstrap uh, by, by Zohar and Sasha Zhabaitiv and, and uh, simultaneously by uh, Fitzpatrick, Kaplan, Pollard, Simmons, Stefan. Um, and then large spin expansion in, in uh, hadrons, non-conformal CFT, uh, non excuse me, non-conformal uh, theories with S matrices, um, developed by a number of people over the last uh, decade or so. And then in what I'll call modern <laughs> era, large charge expansion in generic systems with abelian global symmetries, uh, also non-abelian symmetries, which I'll be mostly talking about today, then uh, limits with large charge and spin, topological charge, uh, uh, EFT connection with bootstrap, a large charge limit in gravity, and also uh, I should say um, uh, I've mostly focused on relativistic systems here, but then there was also uh, independent early work by uh, Damson uh, on very similar uh, limits uh, in non-relativistic uh, CFT. Um, and then uh, uh, a parallel uh, limits uh, of large R charge for correlation functions in uh, in supersymmetric uh, theories with extended supersymmetry and uh, vacuum uh, moduli spaces. Most recently, the development of a double scaling limit in Lagrangian theories with uh, with vacuum manifolds. And yeah, the, the references here are not up to date. There were a number of uh, interesting developments over the last year uh, uh, by this uh, same group uh, at the bottom, but also uh, by a number of other groups, including uh, Kamargatsky, Grassi, and, and Taizano. Um, but so, okay, so what is the large quantum number expansion? What's it for? And it's largely to answer the same kinds of questions as the conformal bootstrap, at least it, when applied to conformal theories, which is uh, how do we systematically and efficiently analyze quantum field theories, uh, usually CFT, that have no exact solution in terms of explicit functions. Uh, we'd all like to know what does theory space look like? This, uh, this I think, is probably the right way to frame the important questions about theoretical physics in the modern era. Um, not about individ solving individual theories, but about uncovering the global structure or the large-scale structure of theory space. And it's a very consequential question for field theory, mathematics, quantum gravity, and cosmology. Uh, most theories are not integrable and we need to learn how to attack them in general circumstances. Although we'll see when integrability is present uh, and we combine that with the theory space point of view uh, and some of these large quantum number tricks, we can learn some very interesting things, I think. So the simplest example, which was one of the earliest that we uh, 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 attacked, uh, the conformal Wilson-Fisher uh, O2 model in three dimensions at uh, O2 charge J with J taken large, we can ask what is the dimension of the lowest operator uh, at large J? And translated via radial quantization, this is uh, asking what is the energy of the lowest state of charge J on, uh, on S2? So a renormalization group analysis uh, tells us that the uh, low-lying large charge sector is described by the effective field theory of a single compact scalar, chi, which can be thought of as uh, the phase variable of the complex scalar phi in the canonical UV completion uh, of the O2 model. So, uh, so applying uh, the renormalization group analysis kind of mechanically and integrating out the radial mode of the uh, uh, the, the magnitude of the scalar phi, which becomes heavy at large O2 charge, uh, we find that the leading order Lagrangian of the EFT is extremely simple. It's just some positive number times the absolute value of the magnitude of the gradient of chi raised to the third power. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, really, uh, really amazing uh, that uh, a principled analysis uh, of this, of this uh, complicated interacting theory at large charge outputs the, the, the second simplest Lagrangian you can imagine. The simplest Lagrangian for a free massless scalar, which is grad, grad chi squared. Well, this is grad chi cubed. 
uh, and it really is uh, it really is a controlled approximation uh, to to the theory at large large O2 charge. Now this coefficient b uh, isn't something we know how to compute analytically, but nonetheless the uh, simple structure of this EFT has some sharp and unexpected consequences. So the immediate consequence is uh, that the lowest operator is always a scalar, and its dimension is some number times j to the three halves, where this uh, coefficient has a simple expression in terms of b. Now, the leading order EFT predicts more than just the leading power law, because quantum loop effects in the EFT are suppressed at large j. So the effective field theory can be quantized as a weakly coupled effective action with an effective loop counting parameter uh, j to the minus 3 halves. Essentially, uh, the loop counting parameter, as you might expect, scales as the inverse of the scaling of the classical action. So, for instance, we can compute the entire spectrum of low-lying excited primaries uh, in a controlled asymptotic approximation and to leading order without any other uh, adjustable coefficients. So the dimensions, and spins, and degeneracies of the excited primaries uh, are completely determined to leading order in terms of this one coefficient. And they're those of a Fox space of op oscillators of spin L with L greater than or equal to 2. Uh, so the propagation speed uh, is not an adjustable parameter. The propagation speed of the chi field is the speed of light over root 2, uh, which is fixed by the form of the effective Lagrangian and also by di directly by conformal invariance. So the frequencies of the oscillators are 1 over root 2 times root L times L plus 1. Now, the L equals 1 oscillator is also present, but exciting it only gives descendants. Uh, the leading order condition for a state to be primary is that it has no L equals 1 oscillators excited. So the L equals 1 oscillators are just the, uh, the conformal raising and lowering operators. So for instance, the first excited primary of charge J always has spin L equals 2, a uh, spin 2 and dimension uh, of, the, of the scalar plus square root of 3. So you can see that the leading order predictions uh, from this analysis are very sharp. Um, Subleading terms can be computed as well. Now these depend uh, on some higher derivative terms in the effective action with powers of grad chi in the denominator. But these counter terms have a natural hierarchical, hierarchical organization in J. At any given order in derivatives, uh, there are only a finite number of such terms. And as a result, uh, at a given order in the large J expansion, only a finite number of terms actually contribute. And since there are far more observables at any given order than effective terms, there are an infinite number of theory-independent relations among terms in the asymptotic expansion of various uh, observables. So for instance, uh, as I already said uh, 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 before, the Splitting between the first and second lowest primary uh, is uh, root 3 plus uh, terms vanishing at large j. So the gradient cube term is the only term allowed by the symmetries at order j to the 3 halves, and uh, there's only one other term contributing with a non-negative power of j, uh, which is some coefficient, again an unknown coefficient, times absolute value of grad chi times the Ricci uh, scalar curvature times this this other term, this uh, term which is forced uh, by by vial symmetry to occur with a particular relative coefficient. So in particular, there are no terms in the EFT of order j to the zero, and that's important. Uh, it was an important point of principle. So the result is that the j to the zero term in the asymptotic expansion of the conformal dimension is calculable, and it's independent of any unknown coefficients in the effective Lagrangian. Uh, so specifically, the formula for uh, the, uh, the lowest operator dimension uh, of charge j is some number times j to the 3 halves plus some number times j to the 1 half minus 0 0.0937256 and so forth, up to terms vanishing at large j. So even without knowing anything uh, uh, quantitatively uh, about the, the, the nature of the fixed point, uh, just uh, simple uh, uh, facts about the, the field content and the symmetries give us this funny, uh, funny sub-subleading term in the asymptotic expansion, which uh, I just want to emphasize. Okay, so there it is. 
Uh, this universal term and the other universal large J relations in the O2 model don't have any fudge factors or adjustable parameters. Given the identification of the universality class, these values are just universal and absolute. And similar predictions have also been made for OPE coefficients uh, uh, by the uh, EPFL group. Now, so let me address some frequently uh, asked questions. Uh, uh, you, you may have some others, but th I'm anticipating these because we've gotten these a lot. So you might think that there's something weird or inconsistent or uncontrolled about a Lagrangian, uh, a grad chi cubed Lagrangian. It's kind of weird. Uh, so uh, you might ask, isn't this Lagrangian singular? It's a non-analytic functional of the field. So when you expand it around chi equals zero, you get ill-defined amplitudes. Yeah, but you aren't supposed to use the Lagrangian uh, uh, at the origin. It's only meant to be expanded around the large charge vacuum, which at large j is the classical solution uh, 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 chi equals uh, some uh, chi equals linear in time and independent of space. Um, with the the uh, uh, mu uh, going as as the square root of the charge. So the expansion into Vevin fluctuations carries a uh, relative suppression of mu to the minus one or more for each fluctuation. Uh, so, so this uh, expansion is, is uh, fully under control around the, the uh, point of interest. So isn't this vective theory ultraviolet divergent, uh, which doesn't that mean loop corrections are incalculable and observables are meaningless beyond leading order? Um, no, the EFT is quantized in a limit where loop corrections are small. So specifically, uh, the way it uh, should be quantized is to take the UV cutoff for the EFT uh, between the infrared scale, which is the size of the uh, spatial slice or whatever other infrared scale, uh, uh, parametrically above that, but parametrically below the UV scale, uh, which is the square root of the charge density. So loop divergences go as powers of uh, cutoff cubed over rho to the three halves, which is much less than one, and these are proportional to non-conformal local terms, which you just subtract off algorithmically uh, to maintain conformal invariance uh, of, the, of the quantum observables. Okay, but then you might ask, well, don't the counter terms ruin everything in terms of uh, predictivity? And the answer is no, because as usual in effective theories, the counter term ambiguities are in one-to-one -one correspondence with terms of the original action allowed by the symmetries. And as we've mentioned, there are only a finite and small number of those at any given order, and at some orders, there are no ambiguities at all. So uh, another question one gets is that, wait, aren't you saying that every CFT with a conserved global charge has the exact same asymptotic expansion? Here's a counterexample, blah, 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 blah. Um, doesn't that falsify this analysis? Uh, no, so uh, one isn't making a claim this broad. The, the field content is as important as the symmetries. Um, and uh, the RG analysis applies to many, but not all CFT with a conserved global charge. And so more generally, uh, CFTs with a global symmetry can be organized into large quantum number universality classes. Uh, so for instance, the free, free complex fermions or free complex scalars in three dimensions are just in different large J universality classes. Uh, the universality class of the O2 model, however, contains many other interesting theories, such as for instance, the CPN models at large topological charge, uh, the three-dimensional n equals two superconformal fixed point for a chiral superfield uh, with with cubic uh, superpotential at large R charge, probably many others in the same universality class, um, and but there are many other interesting universality classes in three dimensions. Uh, large another charge in the higher Wilson-Fisher models, uh, which I'll talk about. Um, also, the uh, CPN models and higher Grassmannian models, both real and complex. Uh, large baryon charge in Chern Simons matter theories with SUN gauge group. Large monopole charge in UN Chern Simons matter theories. Um, and of course, these are dual to one another, and it would be interesting uh, to investigate that duality at large charge. I think that's one of the interesting uh, uh, non supersymmetric questions in this, in this set of. Uh, uh, a set of uh, analyses one could do. And here's some more uh, Samson-related content. Uh, I really want to mention that Samson's early work on background independent string field theory, which is one of the earliest papers I, uh, string theory papers I read as an undergraduate, um, or as a starting graduate student, or whatever I was, I don't know. Uh, it was a great guide and inspiration uh, 
in developing exact RG methods that allowed these calculations to be done. So in general, it's well understood that the detailed form of a Wilsonian action is fully scheme dependent and quantum observables uh, comprising the scheme independent content of an effective theory have some very complicated relationship to the Wilsonian action. Defined in principle by calculating the full path integral, but in practice uh, that's sort of impractical at strong coupling. By which I mean uh, the, the problem of identifying formulae for scheme independent functionals on theory space is basically as complicated as uh, just directly computing observables, which makes it sound as if Wilsonian exact RG methods sort of have a limited utility from a weakly, uh, away from a weakly coupled point in theory space. And that's kind of a, a, a conventional wisdom to some extent among formal theorists. And it's a con conventional wisdom I mostly absorbed, but always keeping in mind the, the point that this uh, nice 1993 paper on background independent open string field theory contains some nice counterexamples to this conventional wisdom uh, in the form of these uh, scheme independent functionals on theory space uh, associated with, with uh, uh, resonant amplitudes um, with a direct connection to terms in the Wilsonian action. So one always has in mind the point that if there's one class of counterexamples, might there not be others? And in fact, this large charge expansion gives an infinite number of such scheme independent terms, namely these cutoff independent leading terms in the large charge expansion of the Wilsonian action. So this is just one nice example of how Samson's concrete and insightful point of view on supposedly intractably complicated problems uh, involving theory space was really uh, uh, inspiring and helpful to us. Um, so uh, before going on to the two-dimensional ON model and integrability, I want to uh, uh, mention some nice confirmations that, that one has had since uh, of the large J expansion. So uh, precise bootstrap results, uh, which would be great to compare with, uh, only exist up to J equals two, uh, but note that the values of the EFT parameters calculated from Monte Carlo uh, give a, at that uh, at j equals 2 in the O2 model in three dimensions, about 1.236 with an uncertainty of 1, which one can compare to the bootstrap result of 1.236 uh, with an uncertainty of 3 in the last digit. Sorry, what? J equals 1 doesn't work, that's why I'm presenting. Uh, yeah, I, I think j equals, one, j equals 1 actually works okay. Oh, yeah. in, in, not only that, uh, something I, I wish I had mentioned that was pointed out to me by Aninda Sinha, which is that j equals zero uh, actually also works extremely well. By, by so well, I mean that um, the actual uh, difference between the extrapolation to j equals zero and the actual value, which of course is zero, um, is uh, just a couple of percent of the Casimir term. So it's only a couple of percent of the sub-sub-leading universal correction. Uh, so yeah, so the, the extrapolation to j equals one is okay. Uh, it's you know, still a few percent. But it's uh, it's not as good as Bootstrap though. Um, so, uh, but J equals two, it's already competitive with Bootstrap. And I think, I think well, there may there may have been uh, improvements since since I wrote this slide. But uh, at the time I wrote it, the uh, uh, Monte Carlo extrapolated uh, w to large J to, to J equals two. It was about three times more precise. Uh, people don't understand why it's so good. No, no. This is one of the big mysteries that uh, I think uh, we would love to answer. There's no. Uh, there's no analogous understanding to this uh, uh, analyticity in spin. Uh, although, by the way, you know, even that doesn't really explain it. Just having analyticity doesn't explain anything. Yeah. But um, maybe analyticity plus resurgence or something, you know, who knows. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no analogous understanding there. No. Since you made this slide, there was a factor 30 improvement in the bootstrap result. Yeah, I was, I was afraid maybe, maybe this was out of date. So I, I should definitely update this. Thank you. Um, so moving beyond the O2 case uh, to look at other models in the same large J universality class, uh, one can look at dimensions of operators carrying topological charge uh, in the CPN models. So that analysis was done by De La Fuente uh, uh, two years ago using a combination of large N and numerical methods uh, with the result uh, of the, the, the expected form of the asymptotic expansion um, with a, a uni universal term an analytically computable universal term of about uh, 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 0 0.0935 plus or minus three in the last digit, which which uh, uh, agrees with 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 this uh, uh, universal term in large charge expansion as well. So, um, oh, so so. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. Excuse me. They're all supposed to be lowercase n, and the n is just the n of the CPN models. But this is a topological rather than another charge, so the n uh, is irrelevant. Apparently, it, it just gives you better analytic control by taking it large. Um, so yeah. So now let me move on to describe some work in progress. Uh, by me, together with uh, Matt Dodelson, Masataka Watanabe, and Masahiro Yamazaki on the Owen model in D equals 2. So this model is non-conformal and quantum mechanically integrable. And for context, uh, let me start with some review of, of the Owen models in general at, at large uh, another charge. So in three dimensions, there's been an analysis uh, by uh, Alvarez Gomez, Lucas, Refert, and Orlando uh, about some basics of the large quantum number expansion, in particular the case of the conformal point in the ON models in, in uh, three dimensions. So in contrast to the O2 model, the symmetry group is non-abelian, so there's no unique charge. So what do we mean by large quantum number in this context? Uh, large quantum number limit is most naturally described by taking the lowest energy state in a given representation of the symmetry group with large weights of the representation. So describing the large quantum number limit in these terms, we find some striking things. Uh, so first of all, in contrast with the case of the O2 model, a generic large weight representation of the ON model does not have a homogeneous ground state for n greater than or equal to 4. So this can actually be proven uh, analytically that it doesn't and that it can't uh, have such a homogeneous ground state. So a fully homogeneous ground state corresponds only to the traceless, totally symmetric, uh, symmetric tensor representation of the internal symmetry group. And all other representations have ground states that are interpreted either as inhomogeneous semi-classical states or else quantum excitations uh, on top of a homogeneous ground state, depending whether the weights are taken large in fixed ratio or taken to be order one deviations from the weights of a large order symmetric tensor rep. Um, so let me say a little bit more about the derivative expansion in these theories and its organization in the large quantum number limit. So in the case of the O2 model, there's a natural organization in terms of the phase variable chi, and then there's a parametric suppression of higher derivative terms in low-lying states of large O2 charge. So in the case of the ON model, analogous statements apply, but the systematics of the derivative expansion uh, are more involved because there are more degrees of freedom and there's no canonical parameterization of the coset. Uh, 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 of the coset, of the target space. But you still get some sigma model, right? Or yeah, you still get some sigma model. It, the, the, um, the, the issue is just that the, the systematic analysis of the derivative expansion to identify which terms do and don't contribute at large global charge is more complicated. And th so when I say work in progress, uh, you'll see that th that's the element that we, we don't have nailed down at this point. Um, but assuming certain things about the derivative expansion, uh, we, some very interesting results follow, and uh, uh, so let me, you'll, you'll see a bit what the situation is as I, as, as I go on. Um, but there is a simple argument to show that there is always a controlled derivative expansion. So the issue isn't, uh, is there one? The issue is, uh, 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 what is it and what's its structure? Um, so the symmetric tensor ground state can always be realized as the overall ground state of a modified Hamiltonian, where the Hamiltonian, uh, the modified Hamiltonian is just the original Hamiltonian with the chemical potential added. Um, so in terms of this modified Hamiltonian, the conventional low energy expansion of the ON model with chemical potential is equivalent to the derivative expansion of the large charge EFT about the symmetric tensor ground state. So there, there always exists a... Uh, 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 a controlled derivative expansion, uh, and in some sense it can be derived from this alternate description, but uh, that's less useful than it sounds uh, because the, uh, the description in terms of chemical potentials obscures many uh, useful things about the, 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 the description without chemical potential, which is to say the, the adding of a chemical potential uh, uh, obscures the underlying Lorentz invariance, full non-abelian symmetry, uh, conformal symmetry if, if it's present, and, and background independence among uh, 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 large quantum number ground states. Uh, so I'd like to avoid uh, the description in terms of chemical potentials, which is, is less useful than it should be or, or has not been as useful as one might think. Um, 
So uh, we're going to turn to the case of two dimensions where the Owen model is asymptotically free and does not have a conformal fixed point, and instead the model flows to a theory with a mass gap. Uh, and despite the absence of a conformal point, the two-dimensional case of the ON model uh, is still tractable uh, to a large quantum number analysis because it has the remarkable simplifying property of integrability. So another major theme in any uh, Shadishvili related event, of course. Uh, and so let me now tell you some basics about integrability in the ON model in two dimensions, which probably may be very unnecessary for a lot of this crowd, but uh, who knows. Uh, so the most convenient description is in terms of n real fields with a constraint, uh, in terms of which the Lagrangian density is just the canonical kinetic term with, with a Lagrange multiplier enforcing the constraint. Um, in these variables, the nether currents have exactly the form you'd expect. The constraint doesn't contribute to them. Uh, and these currents are, of course, present in the Owen models in any dimension. But in the special case of two dimensions, we can use them to construct an infinite dimensional symmetry algebra that constrains the theory to the point of making it completely integrable. Um, so the construction of the symmetry algebra is given in terms of a one parameter family of connections. Uh, and by connections, uh, they're not fixed background fields or independent dynamical variables. They're composite fields constructed from the dynamical variables and their derivatives. Uh, would, uh, th th these are called the lax connections, and they're flat on shell, which is to say uh, they're flat uh, uh, for configurations obeying the equations of motion. So explicitly, uh, the most useful way for us to describe the lax connection is to uh, decompose it into parity even and parity odd pieces. Uh, so uh, with the parity even piece, uh, given by some coefficient times something which is the nether current, but I won't write it as the nether current, uh, and plus something which is proportional to the same thing, but I will write it as the nether current uh, for a reason you'll see uh, soon. Uh, so it's on th these two terms are proportional, but only in the two derivative uh, action. And soon we're going to enter the realm of effective theories where they're not proportional to one another. Um, and then these two parameters are, are uh, uh, related to each other uh, and uh, parameterized in terms of a single spectral parameter, uh, lambda. So notice this, this uh, g squared appears in the expression for one of them and not the other, and that's important because for uh, a more generic effective action, more generic point in theory space, g squared isn't a constant. It's some much more complicated uh, uh, thing. And as I say, the, the, the another current and this uh, uh, thing that looks like the another current aren't uh, going to be proportional anymore. Okay. So the existence of the flat connection implies the existence of an infinite hierarchy of non-local conserved charges. And in infinite volume, the algebra of conserved charges is called the Yangian. Uh, and in finite volume, which we'll focus on, the conserved charges are a subalgebra of the Yangian uh, called the beta subalgebra. Um, and the explicit form of the beta subalgebra uh, 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 is given by the Taylor expansion with respect uh, to the spectral parameter of traces of holonomies of the lax connection around the spatial direction. So these facts I've told you all refer to the classical two derivative action for the ON model. Now at the quantum level, it's clear that this story must change to some extent. Um, so, as I said, the inverse coupling multiplying the action is no longer a constant, but runs logarithmically with energy at short distances, right? So the effective uh, inverse coupling uh, goes as a constant plus one loop beta function coefficient times log of, um, log of the energy scale over the uh, dynamical scale. And uh, then there are higher corrections, which are very uh, large, and, and the theory runs strongly in the infrared. So despite the running, the integrability is known to persist at the quantum level. Uh, and decades of study have uncovered many interesting facts about the ON model at the quantum level, uh, which I think many of you guys certainly uh, 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 have, have, have uh, discovered a lot of. Uh, the, the quantum integrability has been used to solve many observables exactly, and uh, 
but for the most part, this is something uh, I want to emphasize. The S matrix, uh, an exact S matrix for massive particles, has been used as the primary exact object at the quantum level, rather than directly replacing the classical lax connection with any kind of quantum version of itself. And I think this is uh, this is something really interesting. Usually, when we have a quantum corrected thing uh, in, in, in quantum theories, we like to sort of uh, take the thing and approximate it with, uh, with uh, fuzzy versions of itself, like using deformation quantization or whatever. Right? Um, uh, but that mostly has not been the approach to, to quantum integrability. Um, but we're going to be exploring the large quantum number regime in which we expect physics to be semi-classical for low-lying states and finite volume. Um, and in this regime, we're going to encounter a quantum-corrected version of the Lax connection itself. So uh, because we have this extra parameter, which is to say the, the, uh, the quantized, large quantized global charge, uh, we'll be able to discuss a quantum-corrected Lax connection uh, of which, so, you know, yeah. Sign Gordon is sold exactly like that by these guys. You know, they write exact quantum lux operator. Is, is that right? But not for ON. Not for ON. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm I'm only beginning to learn the literature, and. Uh, uh, quantum quantum inner scattering method does exactly that. Replaces by. Uh, mm -hmm. So why haven't people done this for the ON model? Well, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because of asymptotic freedom. Because of, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, in your case, you are not doing what uh, Samson is saying. You are not starting with classical. You want to correct the lags. I can quantize right? Because that, you, know, you can quantize the classical. Mm -hmm. you that's, right. Right. Yeah. that's right. Yeah, so this is... This is something I want to uh, want to emphasize. We're not uh, we're not actually taking the 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 UV limit, right? We're fixing the ratio of the dynamical scale to the size uh, to, to the volume. So it's it's because we have this extra parameter, because you have this extra uh, parameter controlled by the controlled by the size of the inverse global charge that you have. Uh, so maybe that makes the hard things easier, perhaps, because you don't have to be in this uh, be in the be in the asymptotic regime in order to to control it to control it. Um, so now we can describe the large quantum number limit of the ON model exactly the same way as one describes the O2 model at large charge. Um, we can describe it in terms of an effective Lagrangian with cutoff in the limit where the gradients are much larger than the cutoff and the covariant higher derivatives are small in units of, uh, of the gradient. So as in the O2 model, we expect higher derivative corrections and quantum loops to make parametrically uh, suppressed contributions at large charge. And again, in this limit, this limit is really conventional to a convention, equivalent to a conventional low en energy limit for the system in terms of a chemical potential or more general flat background gauge field. So there's no real issue of principle in terms of controlling the derivative expansion. So you might have said, well, let's just uh, analyze the, uh, uh, the Owen model at large chemical potential. But uh, as, I, as I say earlier, this really obscures a lot of the symmetries of the system and uh, uh, a sort of direct analysis at large charge seems to be uh, more convenient in, in, in many ways. Um, ADS people do lack charge of all the time, right? But it's base, it's very similar. There are comments about this I, I'd like to make once we're off video. Uh, because, uh, uh, you, you mean ADS CMT? Right. Yeah, let, let's, let's talk about that off video. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, uh, I mean, m m these guys, uh, in ADS CMT, the, the, the most neutral statement I can make is that at ADS-CMT, the true ground state uh, was never found and wasn't really looked for. Um, people generally studied uh, uh, a correspondence or a notional correspondence between large, uh, large charge and strongly coupled uh, conformal field theory on the one hand and uh, a, a Reisner, extremal Reissner-Nordstrom uh, black hole in ADS on the other hand. Oh, it's not always extremal. A lot of the CMT literature is uh, about, uh, you know, Yes. Um, the the Subchemical potential, sub temperature. Right. Of right. course, the extremal case is still uh, unsolved. Right, but uh, but at some level, it's irrelevant because the uh, extremal rise north from ADS black hole isn't even the true ground state. No, no. Of course, the extremal right. case has always been uh, very fast. Okay, so very fast. Uh, but 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 no. But th that's 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 the reason it, it's somewhat or well, I don't even want to use the word orthogonal. Wrong orthogonal. <laughs> 
to, to, to this analysis. Um, uh, in other words, there is some true ground state of the system at zero temperature and large charge in ADS, but it really wasn't found, and it's not a, it's not a black hole. Um, and, and I think this is one of the really interesting questions in this area, but, uh, but yeah, th you won't find the answer in, in the ADS-CMT literature. Um, so we anticipate that the higher derivative corrections in quantum loops will make suppressed contributions to low-lying states at large quantum number. So it's useful to separate the effective Lagrangian into pure gradient terms independent of the cutoff and other terms, which uh, contain positive powers of the cutoff and higher covariant derivatives of the dynamical fields. So uh, uh, this first uh, term is the gradient-only cutoff independent terms, which are these nice uh, term sort of scheme independent terms which have a direct relationship to leading terms uh, in, in asymptotic expansion and then other which are scheme dependent and also parametrically suppressed at large quantum number. Uh, so the dominance of the pure gradient terms at large quantum number simplifies the form of the effective Lagrangian a great deal but the most general pure gradient Lagrangian is still considerably more complicated than in the conformal O2 model in three dimensions. So there have been various papers written about the higher ON models, but a systematic analysis of terms, even at leading order, was never really done. Uh, so let me tell you what uh, an ingredient that was missing from some of those analyses. So even in the conformal case, uh, the ON model has more invariance uh, for n greater than or equal to 4, uh, even more invariants constructed from pure gradients. So even uh, at leading order in this expansion, uh, there are more terms than just this one uh, a gradient to a power. Uh, so uh, the two important ones uh, are the gradient squared on the one hand, and then the anti-symmetrized uh, pair of gradients squared, and then uh, dimension d dimensionally corrected by dividing by k squared. Uh, so uh, these are independent for n greater than or equal to 4, and so the most, conformal, the most general conformal effect of Lagrangian at the pure gradient level uh, is uh, k to the d over 2 times some unknown function of u, uh, and then dropping the requirement of conformal invariance, which we have to do in two dimensions, uh, k is just the gradient squared. k is the gradient squared, and then u is this... Uh, anti-symmetric invariant squared. D is the dimension of space-time. Space yeah. um, so then dropping conformal invariance, we have a, 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 a k to the d over 2 times a function of two variables. So um, now in higher dimensions, there are even other invariants other than these two. Uh, but in two dimensions, you can show that uh, k and u are the only uh, invariants constructed out of, out of gradients. Um, and so uh, at leading order in the large charge expansion, uh, the, most, uh, the, the, the leading term is controlled by an unknown function of two variables, uh, k and u. And these can depend on, on g squared or, or equivalently on the dynamical scale. And it can be some extremely complicated thing. Uh, so, but this pure gradient Lagrangian contain, contains a great deal of information about leading order properties of the system at large quantum number. So, for instance, the free energy of the ground state in infinite volume and fixed chemical potential is given by, given by the functional form uh, evaluated at u equals zero. That's it. And k equals mu squared. And so this quantity can be directly Legendre transformed to the energy density at finite uh, charge density in infinite volume. So, uh, uh, where, uh, you know, rho uh, is f, uh, curly f prime of mu. You hear you're assuming no breaking of space symmetries? Well, let's see. Uh, in the conformal case, you can, you can prove that... No, no, but yeah. You're yeah. Um, I, I believe it can probably be proved here too, but I'm not actually sure about that. Because basically you're saying that u equals zero because it contains an anti-symmetrization space, no? Um, well, I, th I, think, uh, I think in a few slides, uh, I, I think this is an interesting point of principle, but I think there's plenty of evidence that, that it doesn't break. Uh, in a few slides, I'll get, I'll get to it. Th there's work by Mourinho and Rice basically calculating the infinite volume uh, 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 free energy at, uh, at fixed chemical potential via the beta ansatz. And it what do you mean by chemical potential? There is ON? Yeah, yeah, but, but by chemical potential, I mean for, for a, a given carton. 
So, so you, you pick out a, a, a direction in Carton space. So there's a, there's a unique direction which has a homogeneous ground state in finite volume. Oh, so you pick the special... You, 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 yeah, that's right. But this is... Yeah, but, but luckily that's the thing that's actually been computed. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and in fact, I don't know if they tried to compute more generally. They didn't mention about trying to compute more generally and why they didn't. But yeah, I mean, I guess the reason is because there isn't a thermodynamic limit for those other, uh, for those other, other directions in Cartan space. Um, right. So um, yeah, in a couple of slides, I'll say what's known about it. Um, so the quantity, uh, the energy density as a function of charge density uh, gives a leading large K limit of the energy of the rank K symmetric tensor ground state in finite volume with uh, K over the volume of space held fixed. And the energy goes as some number times K squared over V plus subleading in K. And this identification is not perturbative as a function of G squared or equivalently as a function of uh, M squared over Rho squared. So uh, this leading order classical EFT action resums an infinite series of quantum corrections and in particular, all those that contribute uh, to leading order large volume quantities at fixed density or equivalently fixed chemical potential. So then you can ask, what do quantum effects in the EFT compute? Well, they contribute subleading uh, large quantum number corrections to observables in finite uh, volume at fixed density. So for instance, the one loop correction to the rank K symmetric tensor ground state gives the first subleading term in the large K expansion of the ground state energy. So this term uh, is straightforwardly computable as a Casimir energy that scales as K to the zero at large K for the uh, Kth order symmetric tensor rep. And it goes as, uh, 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 the subleading term goes as minus pi speed of sound over six times the volume. And the formula for the speed of sound is given uh, again by some combination of derivatives of this master function curly F uh, with respect to K evaluated at, mu equal, uh, at u equals zero. Um, so at leading order, uh, all the leading order and much of the first subleading order large k physics of the symmetric tensor ground state depends only on the u equals zero uh, uh, behavior of, uh, of the uh, free energy. But what's remarkable is that the full form of, uh, of the free energy did I say Polyakov? Yeah, is Emma I, I, you, I, I'm not treating all you guys as uh, exchangeable. Trust me. <laughs> this is, yeah, I, 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 I knew that. In fact, I was typing this up in a hurry. Obviously, Zemelajikov, that was a. Uh, I understand. I, I get that. Uh, uh, all you guys are very different from each other. <laughs> Uh, so the form of curly F of mu has been worked out to several orders uh, in the recent work of Mourinho and Rice. And uh, in the asymptotically free regime, it takes the form of a series and in inverse powers of the log of the chemical potential over the dynamical scale. So uh, the leading behavior is one loop beta function times log mu over dynamical scale uh, plus a constant times uh, inverses of logs. Okay. And this agrees with perturbation theory and also with the Ward identity for broken scale invariance. Um, this looks funny a little bit, that large mu. I mean, this is probably not resummed. You need to RG resum it, no? This has a bad behavior in the UV that doesn't really look right. Well, I mean, th I'm, this is just an asymptotic expansion, but this is how the asymptotic expansion looks. Y you mean you think it's funny that there are inverses of logs? No, that like that if you take mu to infinity, you get some disease. No, it, no it's not a disease. I mean, you get like a diverging free energy. Well. I mean, sorry, I suspect that it's not resound. It's like not improved the RG. Sorry, I, the, the first term is one loop beta function times the log of, of the. No, I mean, th this M isn't the like renormalization point. It's really the, the physical dynamical scale. Right, but what happens if you go to the UV? Like if you take mu to be very large. What happens to MG? You, I'm keeping M dynamical fixed and taking mu. Take mu will be very large, you don't, doesn't it blow up? That looks suspicious. Let me think. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I mean, the, the, the way to think of it is that the, I mean, it, there's, a, there's a target you space. You think that the target space becomes infinite? Th that's right, the target space is getting large. It's actually singular in that limit, okay. Yeah, that's you right. You get an infinite target space. That's right, that's right. 
Um, okay, so in order to compute large quantum number behaviors for other representations, even at leading order, we need to know something about the dependence of, of f of k and u away from u equals zero. Now, this information is not directly contained in the free energy at fixed chemical potential, and there's really no analogous calculation to what Mourinho Rice did because the thermodynamic limit doesn't really exist in the same sense. So, how do we get a handle on the U dependence? So, remarkably, we're going to be able to use integrability in a different way uh, in order to calculate the U dependence. Uh, uh, away from u, equal, u equals zero for a given functional form on the u equals zero axis. Um, so this is where we use the infinite dimensional Yangian symmetry generated by the holonomies of the Lax connection. Uh, the quantum integrability of the ON model means that the Yangian symmetry is preserved quantum mechanically rather than merely classically. So the Yangian symmetry must be present in the Wilsonian effective action in some form. Uh, as we said earlier, all observables for low-lying states above the symmetric tensor ground state are computed at leading order by the pure gradient cutoff independent piece uh, of the Lagrangian, this, this uh, curly f of two variables. So the Yangian symmetry has to be present already at the classical level in the f of k and u Lagrangian, because if it were broken at that level, uh, 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 higher derivative terms could not, uh, couldn't uh, restore it. Uh, because they're parametrically suppressed in, a, in, uh, in amplitudes. So we're going to see that the Yangian symmetry is absent for a generic uh, curly f of two variables. So the quantum integrability imposes a non-trivial constraint on the functional form of k and u. Um, so a sufficient and necessary condition for preservation of the Yangian symmetry is the existence of a one-parameter family of Lax connections. So we can write the most general possible form of a connection constructed from the dyna dynamical fields uh, in the ON model, which is flat for any configuration obeying the equations of motion of a modified Lagrangian, depending only on gradients. So analyzing the most general possible form one can write uh, with the correct symmetry properties, we find that the most general possible form is again uh, something like what we saw for the uh, classical two derivative theory, uh, but a little bit different. Um, so the odd, the parity odd piece uh, is again a coefficient times the ordinary Noether current, and then the parity uh, with a uh, with a parity reversal um, on the on the minus component, uh, and then uh, the parity even piece uh, is given again by this form uh, that doesn't depend on the uh, on the form of the uh, of the canonical variables or of the of the Lagrangian. Uh, so this form of the Lax connection is formally exactly the same as in the microscopic theory, uh, with only the form of the Noether current depending on the details of the Lagrangian. But this isn't some random ansatz for the Lax connection. It is provably the most general form of the Lax connection for a classical gradient depending, a uh, classical Lagrangian depending on gradients only. Uh, so G has been replaced. Uh, G has been absorbed into uh, uh, into the form of pi, right? And the details of the proof that this is the most general form have been omitted because they're in the form of a complicated mathematical file, um, which hopefully uh, there's going to be some simpler and more con conceptual uh, proof. But essentially, um, it comes down to several uh, over-constrained uh, linear PDEs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The force this, force this form. Okay. So this form is necessary but not sufficient for the flatness of A on shell. So this form is equivalent to the cancellation of the second derivative term in the curvature of the Lax connection. But the curvature of the Lax connection also potentially contains a pure gradient term whose vanishing imposes an additional condition. And the additional condition uh, first fixes these uh, coefficients in terms of, uh, of one another, in terms of a single spectral parameter, and then imposes a uh, partial differential equation, a first order nonlinear partial differential equation on curly f uh, of this form. Okay. So some actually not just nonlinear but purely quadratic first order partial differential equation on the form of curly f. Wait, I missed what was the principle from where it comes? Uh, the, the principle was that this, this first constraint uh, comes from canceling the two derivative terms in the curvature of the Lax connection. Uh, the, the terms with two derivatives on a single phi. But there is also potentially a term uh, 
in the curvature of the lax connection containing pure gradients only. And that imposes, th that's an independent condition. Uh, on are you to derivative approximation? Are you to derivative approximation or you are? Yeah. So, so in other words, at the, at, the, um, at the level of a classical Lagrangian containing first derivatives only, there are two independent conditions uh, on the uh, coming from, from setting uh, to zero the curvature of the lax connection. The first one is a boring one that tells you that the, uh, the form of the lax connection just generalizes uh, the form of, of the two derivative lax connection. And this, but the second constraint is much more interesting. It gives you a, uh, it gives you a quadratic first order PDE on curly F. Um, so this first order nonlinear ODE can be evolved straightforwardly in the U direction given a boundary condition at U equals zero. So given a functional form at U equals zero, we can straightforwardly write a series solution in U. Uh, so here we have the, the u to the zero piece, u to the one piece, u squared piece, and, and so forth. Um, now, since the semi-classical energies of the non-symmetric tensor uh, ground states uh, depend on the Taylor expansion at u equals zero, these are physically meaningful and can be checked in principle. And furthermore, the large k expansion corresponds to the asymptotically free regime, so we can check these predictions directly in perturbation theory. So blah, blah, blah. Uh, 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 I will just say that uh, the calculation is still in progress, but I'm still giving, it public, giving this prediction publicly in a conference talk, which I hope convinces you that I'm relatively confident in the consistency of these large quantum number methods that I've told you a bit about today. So uh, in conclusion, we have an analytically controlled way to compute uh, Q of T data out sort of any other simplifying limit. For integrable theories, we have tools to constrain the effective action. These constraints give sharp predictions for physical observables that can be checked directly in various limits, and analysis of more examples is sure to yield further interesting surprises about the large-scale structure of theory space. Thank you, and happy birthday, Samson. Questions, please? Uh, in the beginning, you mentioned the theory with Lagrangian with the cube <coughs> of the field derivative. Yes. Is there a Hamiltonian description of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, usual, usual... Uh, Lagrangian, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know stuff. But again, to be used in the same regime, uh, expanded around a classical solution with large, yeah. Other questions? Actually, let me add the remark, maybe it's also for Samson, that for low quantum numbers, like 0, 1, 2, 3, the O and sigma model was solved by Polyakov and Wigman using path integral, and by Fadeyev and Reshetikin using, like, non, using spin chains of higher spin when spin goes to infinity. And they all, probably one can do this for large quantum numbers. But also higher spin chains correspond to a high derivatives in some sense. So maybe there is a connection what they were doing with what you are doing in this regime of large quantum numbers. That's very interesting. So it's like a complex. And Samson knows that. So that's I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's so a question. Let's Here's a question. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, it's kind of a question or a comment. So since you say that your predictions are sharp, I wanted to know how to actually assign a narrow bar to the prediction for, say, spin 2 for the for the two model. Oh, and because because oh. You, you put on the same footing the bootstrap result, which has rigorous error bars, and the <laughs> result, which has no error bars. It's just a coincidence that happens to agree. Um. What is the method to assign an error bar? If you sharp method means you have to have an error bar. Well, by sharp, I was referring to the predictions for the form of the asymptotic expansion. But it's not sharp because you don't know at which spin it kicks in. No, no, it's a prediction about the asymptotic expansion itself. Sharp is an error bar. Then you compare it to the mean. <laughs> I don't think I used the word sharp to refer to a prediction for any for any <laughs> finite. What? 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 Hold on. Blah blah blah. blah. For, for physical observer, physical means you can compare to the data. No, but uh, if it agrees, you say great. If it doesn't agree, you say well. It's just for the symptotic. No, but the prediction for the zero order term is uh, very sharp because you can take derivatives and differences and compare it to the data. That has no error bars. It's exact. Well, at which spin it's supposed to agree? It's an asymptotic uh, result. Well, the data always refers to some refers to some fixed spin. Then we have the data. The method should have. And the honest method should have this property. If it agrees, uh, you should not be allowed to say, well, if it doesn't agree with just because I'm not yet in the symptotic review. 
but it's like asking about the standard model, like what's the utility of computations, no? Well, in that case, there is at least one method to assign the error bar, which is to, cons to compute the next order of perturbation period, in perturbative QCD, and that's the estimate for the error bar. One can agree if it's a good result or not, but, but is it actually it is a prediction. Is it actually correct to do this? It, it, it seems to be working. One can discuss if it's good or not. So I would like to know what's the method here. Well, it's a fantastic Was that a question or? It's a discussion, so we ask for questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. If there are no other questions, let's thank the speaker.